this is Nadine from Nadine Walks and I decided to do a video of packing for the Camino de Santiago. Um, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a little while. You know, I've I first started walking the Camino back in 2014 and I've returned on different Camino routes every year since, um, except for 2020 because of the pandemic and we'll see what 2021 is like. Um, but I am always hoping to go on a Camino and I have a really long list of routes that I wanna continue to take. And over the years, I really sort of honed out a system for myself when it comes to packing for the Camino. And I've sort of figured out a bit what I kind of works for me and what doesn't work. And I know there are a lot of Camino packing videos out there, but I thought it could be helpful to share some of what I've discovered um, works for me, um, some of the things that don't really work for me, the things that I like, the things I don't like. So I um, always am on the Camino in the summertime. And so this is really kind of specifically more of a packing list for a summer Camino. Um, it is a somewhat lightweight packing list, although I will kind of go into maybe some other options and some things I take that maybe have increased the weight of my pack. Um, my first Camino in 2014, I really made an effort to pack really light. I know I didn't want to take a lot. A lot of the advice said about 10% of your body weight was really recommended. Um, and that can make it a little bit hard, especially including food and water. Um, but 10% of the body weight, you know, for me, that was, I was looking at around, you know, 12, 13 pounds that I kind of wanted to keep it at. And for the most part on that first Camino, I did. And then over the years, I have added that weight. I've carried up to 20 pounds, maybe 22 pounds, um, just with some, you know, changing the gear a little bit, carrying more devices, that kind of a thing. Um, but as I go through, I'm gonna try to really talk about what I brought on that first Camino, on the Camino Francaise, um, the one where I kept the weight pretty low. And then I'll also kind of point out some extra items. So when it comes to the Camino, they say, right, the two most important things are your pack and your shoes. And this is the pack that I have used on every Camino. It's a Deuter, the Deuter series. It is the Act Trail 24. So this is a 24 liter pack. Um, it always, I think it always looks a little bit larger than a 24 liter. Um, I think when it's really kind of filled out, it actually can hold quite a bit. Um, sometimes I get creative when I'm maybe carrying a little more and I like hook stuff to the front of it. I stick a lot in this outer pocket, um, but it is a 24 liter. and that is a little bit small for the Camino. Or it's on the smaller end, I love it. I think it's perfect. I um, like having a smaller pack because it kind of encourages me to not bring as much. You know, with a pack that can only hold so much, I'm a little bit limited. So I can't kind of fill my pack with a lot of extra items and make it, you know, excessively heavy. Um, so one thing that I really love about this pack is that it, you know, in addition to being a top loading pack, you know, as kind of all packs are, it also loads from the front. And so, let's see if you can see, it's got these little clips, you unclip them, and it's got a zipper right here. And so this the zipper opens on either side and sort of the front pulls back so that you can load also from the front of the pack. And I love this for a Camino morning when I'm trying to pack. Instead of stuffing everything down, I can kind of open this up and lay stuff out flat. I think most importantly, during a walking day, it is so nice to be able to stop. And if I need to get something in my pack, instead of opening it from the top and pulling out all my gear and rummaging through, I can just pull this back and kind of have access to a lot of my stuff. Um, I think access also to the water that I keep in there is really important. Um, I'll talk about that in a few minutes, but I always carry a bag of water bottle that I keep in my pack. I like to keep it kind of low in the pack just to help distribute the weight a bit. And so that makes it really easy to grab it. So this is the Camino pack I use. Um, I'll kind of bring it out in a little later in the video to show a couple of things that I attach onto the pack. But this is my beloved pack. I hope it never falls apart because it is like part of my body when I walk the Camino. I love it so much. So the other really important item is your Camino shoes. And shoes, you know, this could be a, an entirely, you know, separate video because there's so much information about shoes out there. It's gonna depend on the Pilgrim, what works for you. I always have used, since my first Camino, a pair of Keen hiking shoes. I think these are the Targi model, um, but it's a hiking shoe. So it's not a boot, 
um, but it's also a little bit sturdier than a sneaker um, or a trainer and I like that um, a boot I think especially for a summer Camino it's a little bit heavier than what you need again this depends on the person and if you need ankle support then that's totally great I think for me though um, I I would worry that a boot would be too hot walking in the summer it would kind of trap moisture and sweat inside the shoe and that could lead and certainly in my case when I'm walking with a lot of moisture um, in my feet that leads to blisters so um, I like though the sturdiness of a hiking shoe that is a little sturdier than a sneaker um, and so these have always worked really well for me um, I like Keen a lot this is just a little side note if you have wide feet like I do Keen um, they have some nice models of shoes that really accommodate a wide foot so these you know excuse the appearance of this I was out walking earlier today in the rain and these shoes are a little gross and also old I need a new pair um, but this is the shoe that I always bring along. I also bring, so those are my walking shoes, um, but I also bring a pair of flip flops. And so that's what I wear in the shower, at the albergues in the evenings, walking around a town. Um, some people might bring a third shoe, but I found that that combination, just a hiking shoe and the flip flops for the summertime, um, that's all I need. So those are some really important items. I think the next thing I'll talk about is a sleep system. So basically what I use to keep warm at night or for sleeping in the albergues. Um, I got this for my first Camino. It is, this is my sleeping bag. Um, it is a travel sack from REI. And from what I've kind of looked in the last couple years, when I've looked it up again, um, REI no longer sells it, so I'm not really sure where you can find a comparable model, if you can. Um, but it is kind of like a lightweight sleeping bag, so it's more than a sleeping bag liner, but it's a little bit less heavy than kind of a full-size sleeping bag. I think for the summer, it's a really nice option. So I keep it in this like compression bag. As you can see, as I kind of undid all those clips, the bag, you know, the volume has kind of increased. Um, my first Camino, I didn't have this kind of orange bag. I just had my sleep sack. And when I would pack my Camino bag, I would just kind of stuff it down, you know, into the bottom of the bag and like really kind of pack it down and just put stuff on top of it. And that worked fine. But I do think having, you know, a compression bag is just really nice, especially carrying a small pack that um, it just saves on space in my backpack. So this is the travel sack that I use. This is actually like, I think it might be like an extra long and I'm not a tall person, I'm 5'4". So I think this is longer than what I need. Um, but it really does like pack down pretty small. And so again, with that volume, it's not as big as like maybe a bigger, you know, kind of three season sleeping bag. Um, it's kind of rated to, I think like 50 degrees. So it's not gonna keep you warm camping if you're on the shoulder seasons. For a Camino though, when you're sleeping indoors, um, I think especially in the summer, but I even think maybe on the shoulder season, something like this would work fine. I like having something more than just a sleeping bag liner, um, just because it's kind of cozier. I like kind of wrapping myself up. I tend to get kind of cold, so I like having something that you know, can just give me you know, a little extra warmth. Um, so that's what I brought on my first Camino and really have brought on every Camino since. I have also, um, since that first Camino, purchased a sleeping bag liner. So this is the liner, and this is just, it's a silk sleeping bag liner. It's super thin, it packs down really, really light. So this is what that looks like. Uh, basically, it's almost just kind of like a sheet. I think if you're walking a summer Camino, especially if you don't get that cold or if you sleep a little hot, a sleeping bag liner would probably be fine. Um, it's going to give you some protection against um, against the mattress of the albergue beds. Um, some albergue beds will provide, you know, disposable sheets to put down, but not all of them do. So you definitely want to take something to sleep with in the albergues. Um, a lot of albergues also have blankets. I think, you know, I'm filming this in 2021. We're still in the middle of COVID. I am not kind of sure what the albergue situation is going to be like once things kind of open back up. 
um, and I don't know that blankets are going to be as maybe regularly regularly used as they were in the past. So um, I would definitely say though, bring something to sleep on. You know, um, a sleeping bag liner could suffice for the summer. Certainly, you can bring you know kind of more of a system as well. But that's kind of what I've done in the past. So that's sleeping. Um, for clothing, you know, now clothing is the other kind of big category. So I have a rain jacket. Um, some people will bring a poncho, and I've thought about a poncho before, but I've just, I have this rain jacket. It's more the Marmot brand. Um, I've always really liked it. It's worked fine, so the rain jacket I bring. I have a pair of rain pants. These are also Marmot rain pants. and. I just am pointing these out. I don't bring them on every Camino. I didn't have them for my first Camino. I didn't need them, um, especially in that first Camino. I only got rained on a couple times. And also I was walking in the summer and it was pretty hot. I think rain pants could be a good thing to have walking during the shoulder season, spring and fall. Um, if you're in an area or on a route where it rains a lot um, and you want the additional comfort, I think these could be a great thing to have. Um, I have brought them on other Caminos. It's one of those items that I always sort of debate about before I go. It's just, I mean, they're, again, they're not heavy, but I think when you start to add multiple items that you're kind of wavering on, that's when the weight can really increase. Um, so I, when I have walked all day in somewhat heavy rain, these have been a lifesaver. So I'm still not sure if this is an item I'm always going to bring when I walk a Camino, but it's definitely something that I have um, and that I always consider. And then in terms of clothing while walking, so what I do is I bring two t-shirts with me and so these are just you know they're kind of lightweight quick dry shirts so i always bring two um usually i bring t-shirts but also in the past i have brought like a tank top again like these are you know kind of like hiking outdoorsy they dry really fast very lightweight tops um i always bring two and so on that first camino you know i would wear one during the day I would get to the albergue, shower, wash that one, put on the other one. Um, and I didn't bring kind of evening clothes or clothes to sleep in for that first Camino. I just had two hiking outfits. And so, you know, again, I would, you know, at the end of a day after my shower, I'd put on the clean hiking shirt, wear that through the evening, wear it to sleep in, kind of roll out of bed the next morning and walk with that. And then in the meantime, my other one that I'd worn the day before, I had washed, it was drying to be ready to go to wear that evening. So I would just like switch between the two <clears throat> hiking shirts. And I kind of did that with the pants too, and I'll show in a minute. The drawback of that obviously is that <laughs> you're never really wearing like a separate clean outfit that you haven't been hiking in for hours and hours. You know, even clean, you know, I hand wash just about every day. Some albergues have washers, some have dryers. For the most part though, I just hand wash my clothes. And I found that you know, after a few days, especially after the first week, I just didn't like sleeping in my hiking clothes. They weren't that comfortable. I didn't feel like I was getting them super clean. So as I walked, um, I think it was in Burgos that I just went into like a clothing shop and picked up a really cheap cotton t-shirt um, that I slept in in the evenings, um, slept in at night and wore in the evenings. Um, so I also picked up a pair of lightweight loungy pants. So these are the pants actually I bought on my first Camino, I think in Fromista maybe. There was this like market day, there were these stalls and I saw all these colorful pants and they were like super lightweight. I think it was seven euros. So I bought a pair of these um, that I then wore in the evenings and to sleep in and I loved it. So that's what I did on the first Camino. These aren't, these. this particular pair wasn't the best quality. so. In subsequent Caminos, I have like had other pants kind of like this that I have um, brought along to wear in the evenings. Um, one pair, so this is the pair that I've sort of, have spent a little bit more money on now. It's a Patagonia, so more than seven euros, but it's a very similar type thing. It's like a lounge type pant. Um, I can use it. Again, it's like the material is really great. It's super lightweight. It dries really fast. 
Um, I can use it to hike in if I want to, but for the most part, this is what I change into in the evenings and sleep in. Um, but for sort of my base layers for hiking, I have my pair of hiking pants. Um, these I bought before my first Camino, and I have worn them on every Camino ever since. They are great quality. I got them from EMS, which is an outdoor store here in the States. Um, it's a convertible pair of hiking pants, so they zip off here to convert into shorts. And um, this pair, it fits me really well. It dries super quick if I'm walking in the rain. Um, in the summer, I mostly just sort of zip off the kind of bottom part and just wear them as shorts. Um, but every once in a while, if it's a slightly cooler day, if I feel like I'm getting too much sun and I just want more protection for my legs, I'll kind of put the, you know, the bottom part back on and make them full length pants. But for the most part, I just wear them as shorts. And then I always bring another pair of hiking shorts as well. Um, I've worn like just kind of more athletic shorts in the past, uh, but I like hiking shorts better just because they usually have multiple pockets and I don't know, I just like kind of carrying things in the pockets and and they've always, I don't know, they just always have worked really well. So I usually have two pairs of pants to hike in. So that's kind of the basic, the basic clothing that I bring on the Camino. So the only extra things would be a long sleeve shirt. Um, again, just very basic. I think that was from REI. Um, and I also bring a kind of lightweight fleece. And so again, this is, I'm bringing this in the summer. Um, I think some pilgrims might choose to not bring the long sleeve shirt or maybe not bring the fleece. Um, I like having both. There have been some years that I don't wear the long sleeve shirt much. There have been other years that I don't wear the fleece very much, but I usually find starting off in the mornings, especially if I start early, I like to have um, an extra layer on top. I almost always start with the fleece or the long sleeve shirt over a t-shirt and then shed it as I move through the day and it gets warmer. Um, I like having both because again, I don't like to be cold and this is just nice. It's just nice options for layering, you know, layered well. Um, it keeps me really warm. So that is, oh, and then socks and underwear, right? So I always bring three pairs of underwear. I use the X Officio brand, which, you know, they're a little pricier. You don't need to buy pricey underwear. Um, my first Camino, I didn't have these. I just kind of used three pairs of underwear that I already had from home. Same thing with sports bras. Um, but as I've walked more, um, I just kind of, you know, invested in slightly higher quality gear and this underwear just dries so super fast. I really could probably get away with two pairs, but I like having, I mean, they're so lightweight and they pack down to almost nothing. I just like having a third. So just in case I, you know, can't do laundry or they're not drying, even though they always dry fast. Um, I just like to have a third pair. And the same thing goes with my hiking socks. So this is a pair actually of socks that I haven't even opened yet. They're darn tough, um, just darn tough. It's a quarter length midweight merino wool hiking sock. This is the length that I like a lot. So it's um, does not right around the ankle, but it doesn't go up to the mid calf. It's just like a quarter length. Um, but darn tough is kind of the brand that I think I've settled on that I love. I've used smart wool socks before. Um, I don't like those quite as much, they're great. I mean, they work really well. They just tend to wear out a little faster than darn tough. And so I bring three pairs of socks along. This is also an area where I think um, a lot of people might just bring two pairs. I think for socks though, especially, I love having the third pair because um, if I am walking, especially in the rain, or if it's a really hot day and I'm sweating and I feel like there's like kind of a lot of moisture in my feet, I might want to switch out to a fresh pair of socks during the day. And then just in case, especially on a rainy day, if I wash those socks at the end of the day and they don't dry the next day, I like having the third pair then as a backup. Um, yeah, if there's ever a day that I don't do wash, I could just kind of like having that third pair so that I always know I'm gonna have a pair of dry, somewhat fresh socks with me. So those are the socks. Um, I don't bring a bathing suit on the Camino and I've walked the Camino del Norte, um, parts of it a couple times actually. And there are a lot of opportunities, especially on that route to go swimming. Um, I 
actually used a buff, which I should talk about now, um, as a swimsuit top. <laughs> Once to go swimming, you know, buff is basically just this like coil of fabric um, in a pinch, works as a bathing suit top. Um, but generally, the buff when I'm not using it as a bathing suit, which is rarely ever, you know, you can kind of put this, wear it around your neck. Um, I do that a lot, especially on really hot days to keep the back of my neck um, just out of the sun. I'll also kind of pull it up and kind of wear it, you know, over my forehead on a really hot day to kind of, you know, absorb some of the sweat, kind of keep my hair back, just kind of makes me really comfortable. Um, sometimes I'll just sort of wear it around my wrist. I'll can use it as a napkin. You can, what else can you use it for? You can use it for so many things. So this buff, I remember I got it before my first Camino. And I remember thinking like, am I gonna use this? And I didn't use it a ton on that first Camino, but over the years is probably one of my most favorite pieces of gear. I should mention the last thing that I bring sort of to wear on my body is a hat. I haven't really figured out a good hat yet for the Camino. This is just an old ball cap go Phillies. Um, with the buff, you know, if I wear this, this will protect my face. And then especially with the buff can kind of protect the back of my neck. Um, I think for a future commute, I want to look into, you know, kind of more like a hiking, big floppy hat. Um, but for now, this works in a pinch. So that's all the clothing that I bring. Um, in terms of like an organizational system, uh, for my first Camino, I just kind of carried a few of these just you know gallon size Ziploc bags and I just would kind of stuff clothing in a couple of them and just put it in my pack um, and that works so I think you know before that first Camino especially I didn't have um, like any of this gear and so I had to buy a lot of the stuff that I needed and so I obviously didn't want to spend a ton of money so I think you know a Ziploc bag works for organization um, Years after that first Camino though, I did invest in um, a set of packing cubes. So this is called a packing cube. Uh, it's basically just like a little organizer. And so um, there are different types. I've got, I got a set of the compression packing cubes. So basically you kind of put your gear in and you know, you zip it up as the first zipper. And so it kind of like can hold a lot, but then it has this sort of like compression system, the second layer. And then so you can kind of just like zip that around and it just like kind of pushes all the air out. And so again, with the volume, it kind of like reduces the volume. So it creates a little more room in your pack. And for me, that's been really helpful. It's also just a nicer way than using a Ziploc bag to kind of organize my gear. So I have a couple big ones like this where I keep like, usually keep you know my tops bottoms um my fleece actually I, don't, I might only bring one of these for the clothing and then i usually bring i have this medium size one where i like keep socks and underwear so that's kind of what i use to um, keep the clothing kind of organized within my pack so then otherwise um i bring a little lightweight towel and so I got this also at REI and it is one of these microfiber towels. So this is, there are different sizes of these. This is the size I use. So like not super small. It's bigger than the washcloth size. I think this is medium. It's not huge. Um, it works. I brought it on every Camino. I don't, I was going to say, I don't love it. I, I love that it is so small and then it works well and then it dries me off. But I think the thing I end up missing the most after walking for a month and staying in an albergues and using a towel like this, I just miss a big cotton fluffy towel. So, um, but this for, I think something like the Camino, I think this is a great thing to have and a great thing to use. Um, I take a bar of soap with me on the Camino. I like to use Dr. Bronner's soap. I think I read about that before my first Camino and decided to try it out. It's sort of like an all-purpose soap so that I use it to wash my clothes, I use it to wash my body. On the first Camino, I also use it to wash my hair. So I didn't bring shampoo or conditioner, I just <laughs> brought a bar of soap. I, what I did was I cut the bar in half and I used half of it. I kind of kept separately to wash my clothes and the other half I used for my body and my hair. Um, it That works. 
after maybe three or four days, I just felt like my head and my scalp weren't clean. And so I ended up picking like a tra picking up a travel size shampoo on the way. Um, and every Camino since then, I've always brought a little bit of shampoo with me. Um, I just find, you know, yeah, I can get away with washing my hair with soap, but that was an area where, you know, to save weight, I didn't bring it, but I realized like, oh, actually I do want, <laughs> I want some shampoo. I can, I can carry that weight. Um, for washing my clothes, I use this thing and I can't even remember where if someone else, you know, when I was watching like another video or reading about um, a pilgrim's packing list, if I read about this, I don't even know what these are called. I got like a four pack on Amazon. They're really cheap. Basically it just opens up, you put your soap inside. Um, and then, you know, I kind of, when I'm washing clothes, like the sink in the albergue, I just kind of use this to scrub the clothes and it lathers up really well. I don't think something like this is necessary, but I use it on my first Camino and I really liked how it worked. So I've just been using it ever since. Um, what I do is, you know, I always bring again a Ziploc bag and I just put it in the bag. Um, and sometimes we'll like leave it out in the sun to kind of dry because it gets, you know, this gets really wet and soapy. Um, I always bring extra Ziploc. So we'll, you know, one bag gets like, you know, just kind of too wet and too gross. I'll just have a fresh one to use. Um, so that's kind of the system I have for washing my clothes in terms of toiletries um i don't because i haven't just walked into camino i'm not preparing to walk on anytime soon i don't have the toiletries that i would bring but i keep it really basic so i do bring a little shampoo i don't bring conditioner even though i use conditioner in my normal life i just don't bring it on the camino um, i bring a tiny travel size deodorant i bring i did find a little toothpaste <laughs> um, and a toothbrush Again, the nice thing about the Camino and a lot of the routes in Spain or the routes in France is that you're passing through villages that have pharmacies, that have grocery stores, especially the more popular routes, they cater to pilgrims. So you can find things like toothpaste, you can find travel size stuff, you can find shampoo, um, you can find that stuff to pick it up as you go along. Um, but I always bring these, I think that's about it. I think I bring a toothbrush, toothpaste, a deodorant, shampoo and again i just kind of keep it in a ziploc bag um oh i always bring sunscreen and again i start with I, I wear a lot of sunscreen and so i'll usually start with a much bigger one i tend to go just like full size with sunscreen because i go through it i also bring a tiny thing of vaseline so i always layer and um, put a layer or a coating of vaseline on my feet in the morning before i put on my socks and shoes um, and before i walk for the day um, I, you know, some pilgrims do that, some don't, but that's always just helped me to prevent blisters. So I always bring that. And then I also bring a little tube of Aquaphor. And Aquaphor is just something I use as lip balm. I've been using it for years. I swear by it. I think it's the best. Um, so I always have a little thing of that. I've actually found that it's also sort of nice to use if my skin, especially the skin of my face, feels really dry when I'm walking. Sometimes I'll just like put a little of this, you know, just a tiny little dab spread it all over my face and you know just really helps moisturize because I don't bring any other lotion other than the sunscreen um, I don't bring any moisturizer so I'll just use that um, and I don't bring any makeup with me I what else do pilgrims commonly bring oh I bring a little hairbrush um, my first Camino I just had a little like one of those little plastic black combs so those really cheap tiny lightweight combs and again that worked like can't really see my hair i'm not gonna put it down because i didn't really shower but <laughs> i have long hair um and so that little comb it was like sort of annoying but like it worked so again that first communal i was trying to say weight in my pack since then i've upgraded to a smaller i should have brought it out but i have just like a tiny like travel size hairbrush so it's a little bigger a little heavier um for me since i've walked multiple caminos i know i can carry a little more weight that's been totally fine um but again so i'll bring something to um, comb my hair with i always bring extra hair ties with me um what else oh some first aid stuff again i don't have a lot of first aid stuff super organized because i haven't walked in a little while but i'll usually bring something like this either in a ziploc bag this is just a little plastic pouch i had from something else um, i always bring a few band-aids and bandages um, some needle and thread for dealing with blisters i have a little neosporin spray um, i have this is like a tiny travel size thing 
it says Advil on there, but I'll usually just kind of fill it with, you know, a few, you know, some pain relievers, but also maybe some allergy medicine, a few Benadryls. So just kind of like, you know, like a combination of things I might need. Um, I think, you know, this is another area where it's good to have a few things with you, but I don't think you typically need to have a ton of first aid. Um, I think it depends on the comfort level of the pilgrim. I think certainly if you know that, you know, you tend to, you know, get blisters a lot, if you have any issues with your feet, if you need a knee brace, like those are things you definitely want to bring. I think for me, blisters, like I should knock on wood, um, blisters has been the only really physical thing I've kind of had to deal with and um, that's been sort of hit or miss. So I don't tend to bring like a ton of first aid stuff, just kind of the basics because I know that I can get whatever I need when I'm over there. And also, especially on a route like the Camino Francaise, the Del Norte, there are gonna be a lot of pilgrims there. Um, and in the past, I've actually had pilgrims. You know, I got a huge blister, I didn't have the right supplies when I was on the Norte, and I had pilgrims help me out and share some of what they had. So um, I think, you know, for first aid, you definitely wanna bring some stuff, but I think you don't need to kind of bring a whole pharmacy because you're gonna run into pharmacies there and can always get what you need. Um, a few other miscellaneous items. I always bring some earplugs with me. I bring a few plastic clothespins. These are nice just when you're drying your clothes at the albergue. Most albergues have like a clothesline and they often have clothespins, but sometimes, especially if it's crowded, there aren't enough and it's always nice to have a few of your own. One really random thing that I <laughs> brought along on my first Camino, brought along ever since is an extra shoelace. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I think I read somewhere that a pilgrim brought an extra shoelace or that a you know pilgrim was hiking their shoelace broke and they didn't know what to do and it was a big hassle and you know I heard somewhere um, I think another pilgrim or a hiker kind of used this phrase that you pack your fears and that kind of re resonated with me especially with the shoelace I think I just you know slightly irrational fear of mine but that I'm gonna be hiking alone I'll be in the middle of nowhere my shoelace is gonna break what do I do so I don't know, I figure I've never used it, but I figure it's so small, I just kind of tuck it <laughs> really down far into my pack in case I ever need it. Never needed it, but you never know. Um, I, let's see, for, I'm just trying to think of more things for the first Camino that I brought along. So on my pack, I also always, I have these um, diaper pins, you know, basically safety pins, but they're like a little bit bigger. I have, right now those five because I lost one but you know five or six of these diaper pins that I just hang on my pack um these I really use to pin my wet clothing to the outside of my pack in the morning so that it can dry as I walk during the day um often my clothes do dry overnight but in the times that they don't um these have been super helpful I also usually bring a couple carabiners to hook onto my pack um that's just also helpful if I need to kind of hang anything else off my pack I have a nifty one here, can you kind of see, that a friend got for me. It doubles as a bottle opener, just in case you need to open a beer along the way, I've got that. Um, so I think that's all for the extra stuff on my pack. Um, oh, also, I forgot about water. So um, I use a little Nalgene bottle. Um, I carry it in the side pocket of my pack. It fits snugly down in there. It's not a large water bottle, but the reason that I liked carrying the smaller size um, is because as I walk, I can easily just reach to my side and pull it out. Um, I don't have to stop walking. I don't have to take off my pack. I don't need to ask someone, can they grab my water? I can easily take it out and I can also put it back in myself. Um, I've experimented with a larger size water bottle that's taller and I think it's just kind of the height and sort of the logistics of it. Like I can't, I can't maneuver around to like pull a larger water bottle out myself. So I like to use that small one. But I also always bring back up water in my pack. Um, so when I get to Spain, I'll stop at the store and I usually get, whether it's a liter, a liter and a half size bottle, and I just kind of nestle that down into my pack as my backup water. Um, I think it depends on the route, it depends on the day, it depends on how much water I'm drinking. Um, 
it's kind of whether I need to go into the pack to kind of resupply from this. Um, a lot of days I do, but then there are other days, especially if I'm passing by a lot of fountains, um, I always kind of make it a communal rule for myself that if I'm passing a fountain, even if you know I only need to top off the water in my water bottle, the Nalgene, by a little bit, I just top it off so that I'm always trying to keep as much, as much water on me as I can. Um, but there are some days, especially a hot day, or if there are you know, multiple kilometers between towns with services or with fountains, that I'll drink all the Nalgene, but then I just go and kind of refill the Nalgene with my backup water. Um, I, I think sometimes, you know, I don't need to carry the full, if I'm carrying like an extra liter and a half, as the backup, um, I almost always keep this full. And I think especially on the Camino Frances, I wasn't, you know, there were so many fountains that I didn't often have to go into this. And if I did, you know, carrying, you know, filling it halfway with water would have been fine. Um, and that will save you weight if you don't carry as much. However, um, that same thing about we pack our fears, I, and I think this is a very legitimate one. You know, I don't ever want to run out of water. I think it's a really important thing to carry more water than you think you're going to need. And so that's weight that I don't mind carrying. Okay. So that is the water. And then, so otherwise we just have a few other items. Um, of course we've got the Pilgrim credential. Um, and that I will also keep in and just put that in a Ziploc bag to kind of protect it from water. So we have that. Um, I also have, you know, I bought like a money wallet before my first Camino and that was one of those last minute purchases that I was kind of super nervous about going. I'm like, oh, what if I need this? And what if I need to carry my money, you know, like around my neck and like under my clothes? I don't use it in that way, but I do just sort of use it as a very lightweight like wallet to put my passport in here, my bank cards, my money. Um, so this and my credential, they always go in. I have this like lightweight day bag here. And this bag, again, this is like a Chico bag. And so it kind of like packs down like super, super small. It's very lightweight, but it can actually hold a lot. So I will always keep my credential and my, this money wallet. I keep it in the bag. And then I kind of, you know, when I'm heading off in the morning, I kind of like pack it down and I stick this on the top of all the stuff in my pack. Um, and that's really nice because if I'm stopping, you know, at a bar to go into a restaurant, to get something to eat, get something to drink, sometimes I'll just leave my pack outside, you know, at the table, but then I always reach in and I grab this and I take it in with me. Um, this bag is also really great um, as my sort of evening bag. If I'm going to the grocery store, it can hold a lot. Um, I can even take it into the shower. I usually do. I just put my dry clothes in here, put it on a hook in the shower. Um, it's sort of water resistant, so if it gets splashed a little, it's not a big deal. Um, so that's sort of like my day bag. You know, when I travel to the Camino, I, my pack is small enough that I don't have to check a bag, so I can just do carry-on, and then this is my personal item. So I can just put, you know, all my essentials in here. It's good to go. Uh, let's see, I also always bring a journal. I use a moleskin. Um, these are like, it's just super thin, lightweight, but very helpful because I like to journal. I always have a pen too. I will usually bring a guidebook. It's just one of the guidebooks from the Norte. Um, sometimes I have, if I'm walking maybe a less popular route and there isn't a guidebook, I'll just kind of download stuff onto my phone or take, you know, pictures maybe of the different stages to carry in my phone, um, but I kind of like it's extra weight, but I like carrying a guidebook if there is one. I just like reading it and looking through it. Um, a few things for electronics. So I will bring like a converter um, to use in Europe. And I will bring, of course, you know, my phone, which I'm using to record this video, <laughs> but also the charger for the phone. I bring a pair of earbuds. I have since added a power bank. So I, you know, started to take video on my last Camino and it kind of drains my battery a little bit more. So I have this extra power bank bank that I brought along. Um, I didn't use it though on my first several Caminos. So it's just kind of an extra thing. I don't think you need it, but it's been a nice thing for me to have. Um, I also use, again, to organize these, I have another one of these packing cubes. This is an extra small one. Everything just goes in there real nicely. So it's a good way to organize it. 
Oh, also for my first Camino, this is maybe the last item that I think I have to share, I think, from that first Camino. I brought this little lightweight travel wireless keyboard. <laughs> so I have loved blogging um, about my Caminos and I bl like blogging on the go. And so this was just a super convenient um, way of being able to blog. So the, the case, this kind of thing pops out and you can kind of like prop up your phone here and then using Bluetooth, I could just connect the keyboard to it and then just, you know, more easily type up blog post. Um, I use that on several Caminos and loved it so much. There have been a couple Caminos that I took um, an iPad because unfortunately that keyboard stopped working and I couldn't find a good replacement. So I have taken an iPad, but that's heavy. So that definitely adds some weight. Um, the other thing that has added a lot of weight that I brought on my most recent Camino in 2019 um, is a digital camera, um, a nicer camera. So, and then along with the cords for this, which I don't have with me right now, but that definitely adds um, quite a bit of weight. Again, I, I really liked having it. Um, I tended to just kind of wear it, you know, like around my body as I walked. Um, it worked okay, you know, there, it felt like there was a lot going on, but um, I liked having it with me and I got used to it. Um, so I didn't mind it too much. So I think if you, you know, are really into photography, it's something to consider. So again, with all of these things I've talked about, you know, I think there is like some wiggle room. I think there are definitely some things that you know, other pilgrims would leave behind. There are other things that I didn't bring that, that others might say, oh, I absolutely need that. Um, but I think, you know, paying attention to weight is pretty, pretty critical. I think I was really happy that on my first Camino, I packed really light. I kept my bag, you know, I didn't fill it all the way up. Um, I actually brought a little less than I needed, which is the opposite experience of what most people have. But I think for me that really worked. And then I was able to kind of see you know, places where I can maybe add a few more things. Um, I don't walk with trekking poles, but I always find a stick when I'm I either buy one, but more recently have just like kind of found one um, as I've been walking. So I do like using a stick. Um, I've just never used trekking poles. I know a lot of pil pilgrims bring those. I, oh, one last point. I um, have started to bring little packets of instant coffee. <laughs> So again, this is like my luxury item, I think it's so lightweight, um, but there have been a few mornings on the Camino where I couldn't get my morning cup of coffee and I had to walk a little while without coffee and for me it's not good. So I now bring instant coffee. I, I think for my next Camino I'm going to upgrade and get, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but it's like a little coil that can heat water. And I know some pilgrims use that. I've seen a few pilgrims on the way use that and, and maybe bring a lightweight kind of travel mug as well. So that, um, if I'm in a place where, you know, there's no way to heat the water, there's no microwave, I can still have coffee. I think on some of the lesser known routes, this would maybe be more important, like a coffee system on the Camino Frances, there was only one morning that I didn't get coffee. But it was also a day I had to walk 70 kilometers and there were no services. So it was a long walk without coffee. Probably the worst day on that route to not have coffee, but it was okay. Um, oh yeah, I think that is pretty much my Camino packing list. Um, I will put some links down below to kind of mention, you know, some of the products I mentioned, like the shoes, the pack, um, just a few different things just for reference. Um, if you have any questions, like please don't hesitate to ask or put it in the comment. If there's something that like I bring that you would never bring, like point it out and be like, that's so not necessary. I think that helps other pilgrims too. Um, because I, you know, I know I've said this, but I just really do want to reiterate that um, I think there are some important things that you need, but some of it is also very personal and it's going to be trial and error so that some of what I have you may not need and some of what I don't have you might think, you know, that's really important to have. So. I hope everyone is doing well um, and having fun preparing for their next Camino. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thanks so much. When the buff's around my neck, you know it's bad. <laughs> this is day one and the buff is around my neck. It's bad. <laughs> but it, it's beautiful. We have some clouds finally, not blocking the sun, but like they're in the sky. But at least there are and some. And it's not a humid heat, but it's probably like a mid-90s Well, heat. we are baking. And yeah, so far so good.